Welcome back to Just Scrap Radio on BJPen.com. I'm your host, Cole Shelton. Episode 69, head of UFC 272. We got a good lineup for you first. We're going to be joined up by Tim Elliott to preview his fight against Tagir Ulanbekov. This is a really big and really kind of intriguing fight. I'll say Tim Elliott ranked 13th, Tagir ranked 15th. Tagir's a uh, training partner under Habib Islam, that team. So, and Tim's a big underdog. He didn't really understand it. He thinks this is a really fun fight for him. He said, it's an interesting fight because he doesn't think Tagir is dangerous at all. He says this is a fight where he thinks he can excel because there's no danger factor. He's not worried about getting knocked out if he gets held down on the ground for 15 minutes. He says, so be it. He said that's kind of what has caused him to lose some of these other fights is he is worried about the power. He said that's not a thing here. So he's going to really go back to his funky self and, and really just have a fun time out there. We're then going to be joined by Brian Kelleher to preview his fight against Umar Nurmagomedov. This fight's actually at 145. Brian explains why in the interview, but... Brian Keller, biggest underdog on the card against 13 0 Umar Nurmagomedov. Brian likes his matchup, though. He says this is a fight that he thinks Umar is getting a lot of hype because of the last name and being a training partner and cousin of Habib Nurmagomedov. He thinks he can go out there, really just force Umar to stand for them and have some success on the feed, as well as maybe he's the one that initiates the wrestling and puts Umar on his back and see how good he is. But Brian knows if he go out there and beat Umar, it kind of sets him up to get a guy in that top 15 or a well-known guy. He's been vocal wanting Sean O'Malley. We talked about maybe that fight next, but Brian Keller knows if he can beat Umar, the sky's the limit for him after this one. We're then going to be joined by Dustin Jacoby to preview his fight against Michelle Old Chuck. This is a really fun fight. Right now, it's tentative to open up the card. I think it should be higher up. Both these guys, light heavyweights, really fun strikers. Jacoby, uh, undefeated with that kind of draw into Ayn Kutulov, although a lot of people thought he should be Kutulov since coming back to UFC. And Michelle Olegzaychuk, two-fight winning streak, coming off a big knockout over Shamil Gamzatov. Jacoby knows that Michelle's a very tough, heavy hitter guy, but he thinks he has the skills to go out there, kind of style on him, and then maybe get that finish win and hopefully get a top 15 guy next. We then close things out talking to Jalen Turner to preview his lightweight fight against Jamie Malarkey. This is a sleeper fight of the night. It's it's the final fight on that uh, prelims. Jalen Turner, a really good uh, prospect, three-fight winning streak, coming over a submission win over Eros Medich in the first round. Jamie Malarkey coming off a KO win over Devontae Smith and, Jay, uh, and Kama Worthy. Really fun fight. Winner of this could be right in line to get top 15 guy, but... Jalen Turner thinks he's just too well-rounded for Jamie Malarkey and will end up getting that stoppage win. But thank you all for listening. Be sure to share the show, subscribe, and thank you all for listening. It's all good. All right, we're joined by UFC flyweight Tim Elliott, who's back in action. Tim, how's it going, man? Going good, man. Good to be here. Yeah, obviously fighting on this big card, UFC 272, like Covington Mazel at the top, which is obviously going to attract a lot of viewers, like, when you kind of found out that was the headliner and like this card's actually a really good one that you're going to be on it. Like, what's that like? I mean, anything to get out of the apex. Um, I'm, I'm so stoked to be in front, in front of some fans. Uh, doesn't really matter, you know, who's the main event, but just being out of the apex in front of the fans in a big cage, like that's everything to me. So uh, th- that was already a huge uh, plus just getting out of there. But, also now being a part of a big pay-per-view card just, you know, um, makes just a lot more pressure. And, man, I'm just – I couldn't be more excited to actually get in there and fight. It's been a while since I've been excited to fight. Uh, being stuck in the apex and stuck in the hotel, man, it, it just takes a lot of the fun out of it. Uh, your last fight, what you take away from that? Because that was a super close fight between you and Nicolau. Uh, I mean, we just – we made a mistake. Uh, fight IQ, I'm not one to sit around and wait. Um, I thought I was up, but it, it doesn't really matter what you think in, in that moment. That was uh, a huge mistake, and and uh, I won't make that I won't make that mistake again. Uh, I I watched the fight. I still feel like uh, I did well in the fight, um, but I, I was kind of fighting with him. I wasn't fighting the win. Uh, at the end of the rounds, um, I was I, I would start the rounds off doing really well, and then he would kind of catch up, and then I would start off doing well, and he would catch up. Um, I need to just just stay on the gas pedal. I feel like, and uh, especially with this guy, I'm not going to be able to let off. Um, and it didn't work in the last fight either. So um, I learned a valuable lesson in that, and uh, it, it's going to pull through in this fight. And your opponent in Tagir, like, how much do you know about him? Uh, I've seen his two fights that he's had in the UFC, both really close fights. Arguably, lost both of those fights. Um, I don't know. He he not a huge danger factor. Um, but again, I don't I don't watch too much tape. I let James do that, and then he puts together a game plan, and then uh, I go from there. I'm a soldier, man. I like to take orders and 
and listen. And, uh, uh, and we, again, last fight, we kind of made a mistake as a, as a team. And, and, uh, but I knew that I shouldn't have set in that last one and, uh, definitely not going to do that in this fight. And, uh, a tick years, a guy you can't set on bottom with. He's, uh, he's going to be a heavy pressure. You know, he's one of Khabib's guys. So he's going to be very similar to that. Yeah, that's something I want to touch on. Like in both his fights, he's been these like massive favorites and he's like really hyped up. Do you think some of that comes with being a main training partner, Habib, and coming from that camp? Yeah, man. And and he's good, no doubt. And he's a big guy. He's really tall and long. And, uh, you know, all those Dagestani Russian guys are, you know, they're good. So uh, I think it's well earned and, and he's undefeated in the UFC right now. So uh, I think uh, he's he's right where he should be. And, you know he's he's definitely a tough match. Just it's not a not an easy matchup. I was supposed to fight Amir Albazi instead, and I was a you know I felt like that was a little bit easier fight. And then uh, you know that one fell through, and then you got to take what you can get. Was that Albazi fight on this card too? Like is Tagir just kind of stepping up? I don't remember when it was, but originally they asked if I was to fight him, and I said yes. And then I guess he got hurt or something, so. It was Sue Mod Jahari and then to, then uh, Amir and then this guy. So, and with this fight, like Tagir is gonna try to wrestle you. Like that's kind of his game plan. But do you think he may not wrestle as much as he does just because you're obviously very good off your back and on the ground? You know, I don't know. I think he's probably gonna stick. Those guys just have a game plan and it works really well for him, and and they're relentless with it. So I don't see him changing too much. Um, it's worked for him in the past. I don't. I don't see him straying too far away from that, honestly. And like, how do you kind of see it playing out? Just because I think if you could kind of force him to strike with you, that's obviously gonna favor you, just because his striking isn't as good as what his wrestling is. Yeah, and uh, it's in a big cage. I think that favors me as well. Um, I just can't let him rest. He uh, he gets inside and he's long, and he gets his arms wrapped around guys, and he kind of smothers them. Um, but he also fought two guys that are jujitsu based that don't mind just sitting on their back and, and playing in guard. Um, and guys that aren't that great in the clinch. I, my favorite position is being in the clinch. I don't mind going upper body with guys. Uh, I got knocked out in that ask our ask girl fight. And I think I tossed him three times and I have no recollection of that fight at all. So I don't mind going upper body with him. And, uh, you know, from the last fight, I know I'm not going to sit like I did last time, but, uh, again, yeah, he's, he's going to be a tough look. I know that. Which that Askarov story, like when you told me that, I still can't believe that like you have no memory of that at all. Cause you it's went three rounds with now. him. <laughs> like it's crazy. Cause you went three rounds with him and you fought like pretty well to not even know like what you were doing. It's one of my favorite fights to go back and watch because I don't, it's like, I don't, it's, it's unreal to, to watch and see and just not recollect any of it. Uh, with this fight like if you can force him to like stand up like how much benefit is that to you because you're kind of that awkward striker like it was in your nickname for a while that like you kind of throw unique stuff that he might not see coming you can kind of catch him with one of those things yeah and he trods forward you know i'm gonna be hard for him to get his hands on but i mean look at the end of the day i'm a wrestler too more than likely we're gonna end up on the ground at some point um I can't help but shoot takedowns even if I'm winning on the striking. So, um, again, it's I'm going to have to just be a lot smarter than I was in my last fight. Uh, I feel like I fought well uh, in the last fight, but I wasn't fighting to win. And, uh, like, we're fighting to win. I'm, I'm going to fight to beat this guy. I'm looking to finish this guy. Um, and and I know, like, if I could just put the pressure on him, he kind of fades a little bit. So he's he's a big guy. So I'm going to wear on him early and hard. And, uh, and um, I, I'm looking to finish this guy and get him out early. I've I know James has most of the tapes that he has. There's certain things you guys have already noticed that can benefit you in this fight. Yeah, tons of tons of small things. And uh again, like for me it's huge going into a fight. Like he's not there's not a huge danger factor. He's not going and knocking a bunch of guys out. He doesn't have a whole bunch of submission, you know, crazy submissions in a row. He's not like a footlock guy. So uh it just takes a big stress off. Like worst case scenario, he takes me down, holds me down for three rounds, which is terrible, but like that you know, that's not giving you any brain damage or, you know, kicking you in the liver or anything. So uh, it, it just takes a big load off. And I, I just I really feel like I'm going to be able to go out and have fun in this fight. And if, and if I'm having fun, man, I'm a problem. Does that help you perform better, too, that like you don't have to worry about oh like this big shots coming or oh, I got to always watch out for that right hand or something? 
I, I mean, you always have to worry about it, but yeah, if, you know, if he doesn't have several knockouts with a right hand. So, uh, and like, even with Sue Matajahari, he's got that sharp down the pipe too. Like that's uh that's something you have to watch out for constantly. Like with this guy, I have to watch out for being body locked and pushed up against the cage, which sucks, but it's not scary. You know, <laughs> uh, with a lot of these guys, like even Habib, like Islam, all those guys, like they're such good grapplers, but we've never really seen someone try to grapple them and put them on the back. Like, is that something you kind of thought of too? Is like, how good is he going to be when he's the one like getting on his back and being pressed up against? Yeah. And I know I can take this guy down. I know that's going to happen, but um, man, he gets up to, to gear. Doesn't play on bottom. And every time I've seen him hit his back, it's he immediately gives up his back and comes up even with high level, you know, jujitsu guys. He's, he's not going to sit on bottom. He's uh he's coming up to his feet and he's coming up hard and fast. I know you always like getting the finish. You're just putting on entertaining fights. Like, are you putting a bit of pressure, especially with the fans there, to go out and have a like a fun fight or uh, finish? Man, yeah, I think this is going to be my breakout fight. It, it's been a while since I've really went out and had fun in a fight, um, and uh, I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that on March 5th, uh, and I'm really excited. I've had this camp has been long, and I'm just so ready to get this shit over with and get back to Vegas and, and get to work. What do you think that walkout's going to be like with all those fans? Because it's been like two full years for you. You know, I don't. I, it's going to be like the first time again. And, uh, you know, my first fight in the UFC in 2012, I fought John Dodson. One of my, the best moments of my life. One of my best fights that I've ever had. And at that time, I had no clue what I was doing. And, and John Dodson was so much better than I was and so much more prepared than I was. And I just, I just had a breakout performance because I was – and I was fighting out of my league – uh, that's not the case now. I'm not fighting out of my league and uh, I'm going to have that kind of performance except for now I'm actually well prepared for it. Something I noticed with Tagir too is this is the first time he's ever fought in America. Do you think that's going to play any factor like just the time change and kind of everything that comes in and all the travel? Yeah, and like you said before with being on Habib's team, like he's fighting in Abu Dhabi and and uh, those guys are you know big fans and they're all the same religion like he's he's coming to a place where that's not necessarily a big deal he doesn't have a fan base here there's not you know there's there's no uh there's no ties there in las vegas that that's my home so uh yeah i think it's going to be a huge benefit to me uh, how has camp been like anytime you go to glory like it's a lot of hard work out there and uh, i i live here now i moved here full time yep. so uh yeah, I got Kevin Kroom has been my main training partner for this guy. He's a, he's a very similar body type. He's a good grappler. Uh, Kroom's a better striker than this guy. Um, Jeff, I just, there's so many little guys out here that uh, I'm just so ready to go get hit by somebody that's not these guys. Like <laughs> all these guys here know exactly what I'm going to do, know, know exactly how to beat me. So uh, I get so nervous going into practice now having to fight these five different, you know, little UFC guys. When March 5th rolls around, like, it's going to be such a relief just to have to fight one guy for 15 minutes. It's, you know, uh, it's going to be a good night. <laughs> Who's going to be in your corner? Uh, be uh, James Krause, Kevin Kroom, and uh, my wife, Gina Mazzani. And your last fight, you had Jeff Moline in your corner. When I was talking to him, like, he was, like, so excited for that. Like, he was saying, like, he always looked up to you. Like, what was that like being able to have him in your corner? You know, it was great. And, like, again, like, at that time, he was a, just a good look for me. And, Man, he's uh he's one of the best guys in the world. He he's teaching classes here, and you know, I sneak in and try to steal all the shit from him that I can. Like constantly, he's uh he's he's a problem at one twenty five. He's like a literally mini James Krause of how smart he is and how much he knows. He's a he's a legit MMA nerd. Uh, what do you think a win over Tagir does for you? Like he's ranked fifteen. I know you're ranked ahead of him, but like it just would be another win, and like to hand him his first UFC loss would be something. I mean, honestly, I just want to go. I want to get these other fights that I had scheduled. I want to either sue Mata Jahari or, uh, or uh, Amir, Amir. Alwazi, one of those guys. Like, I've already agreed to fight them, and then they, you know, something happens and they're hurt. And like, I'm not for the first time in my career, I'm not like scrounging for money. I want to, I want to fight and have these good. I'm gonna have time to take a good long camp. But I feel like these young guys think they're gonna go into a fight being 100, percent and they're not. Like everybody's hurt. Um, so if there's a camp more than four weeks, these guys get hurt. So uh, hopefully I can get one of them fights that I've already agreed and, uh, you know, just go from there. Is it basically your fight, then help Gina with hers, and then probably you won't fight again until after Gina's? 
Yeah, because she's April 30th, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And do you like that fighting you two pretty close together, like a month and a half apart? Uh, you know, as long as we're not fighting at the exact same time, I think is is good. Um, but yeah, it'll be nice for me not to have anything scheduled and I won't even look at anything until, you know, she's done fighting. Uh, just last thing, like, so what is kind of that time frame then? Like probably the summer? Ideally, uh, you know, maybe right after Gina, I'm going to stay healthy and stay in shape. Uh, I just got a new contract. I think I have six fights on my contract. I want to fight out these six fights, get some wins. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking at one more run here. You know, I'm getting to be old in the division. Everybody has fights in their twenties. So, uh, this is my last shot and I'm going to make the most of it. I was just following up. Was that a new contract for this fight or did you sign it before your last one? Uh, it was actually for this one. I signed a contract, uh, because I agreed to fight somebody short notice and they needed a replacement and that guy turned the fight down, but I'd already signed a contract. So I lucked into a new contract. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Then probably more money too for you out of yes, not even having to fight on short notice. Yes, sir. Uh, is it going to be hard though? Like after this one to go back to the apex, if they put you there, like, I feel like the apex is already hard enough, but then once you kind of experience the the crowd, it's going to be hard to even go back. You know, it's always something I think about, but at the end of the day, like used to tra training in a quiet gym, like it's, it's, you got to train like you fight and fight like you train and, and it's on me to make those adjustments. Yeah. I'm not going to like it. And, um, you know, I, I'm just looking forward to this fight and I'm not getting past this one right here. We got, we got fans on March 5th. I have a good opponent. You know, this guy I know is not going to pull out. Like the, the Dagestanis aren't known for backing out of fights or getting hurt. So uh, I feel confident this one's going to happen and uh, I'm just going to go from there. Uh, just one more thing quickly with the flyweight division. Like, what do you make of that with like Moreno, Figueredo? Like, how would you kind of go about that? Because like, it's hard to do four straight fights involving guys, but then there's like, Askarov Kai like but then other than Askarov Kai Pantoja like there's no real like guy up there that's like should get that title shot and usually I would say four fights no but those guys man their fights are good they're competitive they're they're back and forth obviously I think Brandon deserves a rematch so and nobody in the division is complaining because the division is as hot as it's ever been right now because of those guys you know Brandon Moreno and you know uh Cody Garbrandt coming down and TJ and, and Cejudo moving up and like the flyweight division is as cool as it's ever been right now. So nobody's complaining. And uh, at least not that I'm seeing uh, these guys want to fight a fourth time. I say, let them go. I like watching it. I learned from those guys watching them. So uh, yeah, they can fight 10 times. I don't care. Do you think you could be right up there by the end of the year, like string the other three wins and you're kind of right up at that top? Yeah, man, I don't, I don't see why not. And a lot of it is, is game plan. I know Brandon Moreno and these guys are really, really, they're, they're amazing. They're young. They're really talented, hard workers, but like I got secret weapon with James Krause. Like this guy can, he can lay down a game plan and, and teach you how to beat somebody who's better than you, who's younger than you, who's faster than you. And, uh, you know, if, if I don't win 90% of the time, it's, it's on me just not listening and not doing something, you know, like, right. It's not, my abilities usually it's it's coming from that end and uh my coaches just they put me on another level and those guys just don't have that right now so yeah i don't see why not well tim i appreciate the time thanks so much for doing this yeah man, i appreciate it anytime all right we're joined by ufc bandway brian keller who's back in action at ufc 272 brian how's it going man good man how's everything I'm doing well. Obviously, a big fight here. Uh, I was fighting Habib's cousin and Umar Namagomedov. Like, what do you hear that name? Like, is it just an immediate yes, just because of kind of the hype around him and his last name? Yeah, I mean, for me, like, opportunities come and I'm going to take them. You know what I mean? I'm not going to let it pass by. Uh, right now, I'm healthy. Uh, I'm coming off two victories and, you know, momentum's rolling. And I I'm figuring, why not keep active? I like the feeling of that. I love the momentum I have right now. And, and to fight a guy who's undefeated, who has a lot of hype behind him with a huge last name that he has to own up to, uh, I think uh, it's a big fight for me. And uh, it's it's really only a win-win situation. I get to fight in front of fans again, so I'm excited. What have you made of his, like, he only has that one UFC fight. Like, he didn't fight all 2020. He had a bunch of fights canceled. But his one UFC fight, he looked pretty impressive. Like, what do you kind of take away from that? 
Yeah, I mean, I think he has uh, he has well rounded skills. Uh, he's a big kicker. He 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 doesn't seem to really weigh heavily on boxing, but he likes to kick a lot. And uh, of course, he's going to be looking for a takedown eventually. That's just their game, you know. Try to get my back and and try to get a submission there. But you know, I'm I'm not looking at this guy as like, oh my god, it's just like Khabib, you know. It's like he's not the same guy, you know. Nobody is Khabib, so. Uh, I think, you know, coming into this fight, I feel very confident, you know, to be the guy to shut him down, take his O, and uh, and that's what I'm here to do. I'm not sure if you know this, but he actually fought uh, uh, Saeed, who you're supposed to fight last time out in 2018. Like, have you looked at that fight to see what he did? Because obviously you studied Saeed a lot and kind of looked at what you were going to do to him. Yeah, it was funny. I saw that fight, and then I remembered when they offered me this fight that I had saw that already. Uh, so I kind of already had a gauge on his tendencies. Although, you know, I was looking at that fight for Saeed. I kind of was able to break down a lot of what he was doing as well. And uh, I thought Saeed actually did pretty well in that fight, you know. But uh, uh, given the fact that he didn't really throw a lot. Like, he threw one-off kicks back at, at uh, Umar. Didn't really offer any kind of mixing up of strikes to takedowns and keeping him guessing and stuff like that. And it was a very even fight. I mean, Umar definitely won the fight, but it wasn't like a blowout. And it wasn't like Saeed didn't look like he could compete with him. Now, you know, I think Saeed's a great fighter, but uh, I think I'm a guy that has a lot of experience. And that goes on cold for in these kind of uh, situations where people just kind of write you off and they think, oh, he's taking his fair share of losses. This guy's the next Khabib. He's undefeated. Like, that's where people are mistaken. You know, like, I'm still in a great spot in my career. I have a, a good head right now. And, and, and uh, you know, I think I could beat anybody. So I'm excited for it. Have you seen the betting odds for your fight? Yeah, very tempting to throw some money on myself. <laughs> I don't like to do that, but... I've seen, uh, I'm like a, at least like a minus four something right now. Yeah, he's minus 630 and you're plus like 450. And you're the biggest underdog on the card, which was like, I'm shocked by that he's this big of a favorite. But do you think a lot of it is because of his last name? Yeah, you know, he has that. He won his debut. Uh, I th- he was a big favorite in his debut, even against the tough guy, Morozov. Uh, but you know, um, yeah, it's kind of expected. I, I think the, the bookies kind of know what they're doing and they see a guy that's, you know, obviously got that last name. He's never lost. So there's a lot behind him where they don't believe that, you know, that I could take this guy out because I've had chances before and I, you know, I've come up short, but, but, uh, yeah, man, I mean, it is what it is. These are just numbers. They have nothing to do with what goes on during that 15 minutes. And that's the beauty of it. Uh, you know, if I show up and I show up as my best. I'm very confident that I can get this win. Your wrestling is obviously a big part of your game, but how important do you think your takedown defense will be? Because I think if if you can kind of stuff his shots and make him stand, like I think it obviously plays in your favor because he's not a guy that wants to uh, like stand and strike with guys. Yeah, you know what it is? I, I could see where he's comfortable. You know, he does like the kicking range, but he kind of likes to fight where it's not a very high volume back and forth type of scrap. Um, where, you know, a guy like me, I like forward pressure, get inside and land those heavy shots, boxing and wrestling and mix those two together. Um, yeah, you know, and, and we haven't really seen this guy taken down or, and on his back, right? And I believe I could take anybody down. You know, I've done a really good job as of late and showing my wrestling skills and really being able to blend them together with my striking. And I think that's been like a really, uh, uh, a really good advancement in my game lately. So I think for him, he has to watch out for my takedowns as well. And if I can keep him guessing, and like you said, stuff his takedowns, like he, he's in trouble if he has to stay in boxing range with me. And your power, I think, is underrated too. Like we saw you knock out Hunter Azure. Like, I think that's something he's going to have to be worried about too is if you get in that boxing range where – because you have quick hands too that a lot of these shots, like they don't see coming are the ones that drop people. Yeah, man. You know what it is? I'll be honest. Even when I watch myself, I don't really see myself as the fastest guy, the most explosive looking. But when I land shots, I feel it in there that these shots land like – you know, they have the same kind of effect as, you know, J- Jamal Hill, who just fought. Yeah, he, he throws weird strikes, but when they hit people, you see the impact. And that's kind of the way I am is like they don't look the best, but when they land, it's that crack, that right spot. And the way that I'm able to trick guys into not really seeing what's coming, those things play big factors. And I think that's going to be a, a, a huge thing in this fight. You know, if I could land something heavy. Who knows, man? How does this guy react when he's hurt? We haven't seen that really, right? You know, we haven't seen a, a bunch of things. We just kind of seen him fight at his distance, throw his kicks, and l- get a takedown and try to control you and get your back. 
uh, cutting back down to 35, like I know it's something you like having a lot of time for. Like, is this something that was like a bit more short notice than you thought for cutting down to 35? Actually, the beautiful thing is this fight's at 45. I don't even well, think it is they, at 45. Yeah, it's at 45. I don't really think they put it out there for some reason. They listed it as a bantamweight fight. I saw that myself, but uh, the cool part is, man, is like I'll stay active and I'll take these these risky fights that are short notice, but also opportunities. Is you know the UFC is willing to let me fight at, at a, a weight class above against a guy who's in my weight class, so it's really a fair fight, and we both get to not you know cut a, a, a huge amount of weight, and I'm all for that. I mean, I did that like three times or you know whatever how many times during the pandemic. And I feel good at 45, you know, I mean, I feel like more like myself, my full energy, full strength and all that. And I'm sure he'll, he'll feel the same way, not having to cut all that weight as well. Is that something you asked for? Is like, that was just a fight off or was that 45? No, well, what happened was I had just fought, you know, like a couple of weeks yeah. before I found out and I'm, you know, in, you know, not, not like complete like effort mode, but I'm in like a little bit of like, let me eat a little bit, enjoy my life, not train as hard, but stay in the gym. So I'm staying in the gym, but I'm eating a lot more. I'm gaining weight, you know, and, and, and I was getting up there and I was just like, you know what, let me throw it out there. Like if they want me to take this fight on, on whatever, three weeks, I'm down to do it, but let's see what we can get done here. You know, will, will you do it at 45? So they asked Umar's camp and I guess he, he agreed. And then uh, that was that they, the UFC was cool about it. And obviously short notice fight, but you just fought too. So like, how has training camp been? Like imagine it was just right back into it. Yeah, exactly. Right back into it. You know, what's, what I really like about this situation is like uh, my last fight is literally a training session, you know, for this fight. And that's how I, I treat it. You know, it's just like a really intense, hard sparring session that I just kind of rolled right over back into camp. I took a week of doing, you know, my just having fun, doing cardio, strength and conditioning, stuff I wouldn't necessarily do in the peak of my camp. But as soon as I found out about this fight, it was back in the gym doing, you know, drill sparring, wrestling, jujitsu, all the stuff I need for fighting. And, um, yeah, it just I pretty much kept everything I had from last camp. So uh, I prefer this. I like short notice because I'm in the gym all the time. I don't really like – last camp I had, like, way too much time. Like, yeah, it's, it's good for, like, cutting down to 35. But mentally it's like – I get drained, you know, you get burnt out. You're like, you're busting your ass for like seven, eight weeks. You're like, when am I fighting already? You know, but this case is like, oh, like I just did this. I'm back in the gym and we're about to do this again. So I'm good. Is it the usual guys you're working with or you, have you brought in anyone like different for this camp? No, the usual guys, you know, I'm up at Long Island MMA, uh, 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu. Uh, the, the great thing for what I have is I have a lot of guys that are just dedicated, young and hungry guys, you know, especially uh, at Long Island MMA, you know, I'm sparring with a lot of guys who are just turning pro that really have that that lion, that hunger that I that you know that you need when you first get in this sport. It's like the same with music, you know, like the best music that's made is on the come up, you know? And that's kind of like with MMA is like the guys that are on the come up, they're the hungriest guys in the gym with the most excitement to be there. And being around those guys has really helped me like revive my career and, and uh, you know, bring that energy back to myself. Cause like I was telling you, you know, you get burnt out. That happened, you know, multiple times in my career, but being around these guys has been really helpful in keeping me young, keeping me fresh and, and, and really uh, giving me that mindset back. And fighting back in front of fans too. What's that like the walkout and all that experience is going to be back in Vegas in front of fans. Yeah, man, I can't wait. It's been like two years, so uh, I miss the fans. It's going to be different. You know, I know there there some more nerves come with that, but also more excitement, you know, and, and, and for me, I believe better performances, you know. Uh, yeah, the apex is cool. It's relaxed, and, and I can embrace that and, and, and find the pros in that, but – this sport's meant to be fought in front of fans, you know, and uh, I, I just can't wait. I hope I'm like late enough on the card where there's some fans in there, you know, because they, they start rolling in later in Vegas. So uh, I believe I'm like the main event of the early prelims. So hopefully there's, uh, you know, a good good amount of uh, energy and, and loudness there. Um, you're uh, with this one too. Like you invited McGregor out to your corner. Have you got the response? No, man, I thought that was a pretty cool idea. You know, I thought that would stir the pot and kind of bring excitement to the fight. And I mean, I mean, how, how amazing would it be if like McGregor came in the cage in between rounds and then you see across the cage, Khabib is over there, like cornering Umar. Like, I just thought that would be amazing. 
Uh, and no, nah, he didn't say anything. It caught a lot of traction, but uh, he's probably too busy, you know, doing his thing on some kind of yacht out, you know, in God knows where. A uh, bigger octagon, though, than the Apex. How do you think that plays a factor in the fight? I'll be honest. I like the small octagon. I don't notice a huge difference. Um, it is a little bit safer if you have more space, in my opinion, to be able to move and evade and avoid certain things. Um, I would just say from my style personally, the small cage works because I like to pressure. Um, I like to kind of cut you off and be in your face, and I use the cage a lot for takedowns. But I could still make that happen in a big cage. It's just really about positioning and where you are in the fight. Um, but, you know, for a guy like Umar who likes to stay at, like, kicking distance for the most part, um, you know, I think that could help him with with kicking stuff. But for me to defend takedowns and maybe stay really outside where he can't take me down, that could help me. How do you kind of see yourself winning this fight? Because I know you don't really like going the distance. In the past two have gone, like, I imagine you kind of want to get that stoppage here. Yeah, man, of course. I'm always looking for the finish. The distance is great for, like, experience and getting those rounds in. And, and, and you, you know, it can never hurt to be in there for the full fight and to, you know, dig deep and, and, and face adversity and still come out and win. But the name of the game for me is to, to hit you, to hurt you, and to get you out of there quick. And, and, and that's what I'm trying to do with all these shots that I'm throwing. Um, but, yeah, man, I see myself winning this fight with aggression, you know, with, with more will to want to, want to win um, by, by defending those shots, like you were saying, and, and, and making him pay for it. And really not allowing him to settle into his kick range and his slower pace of fighting and really be in his face. What do you think a win over Umar does for you? Because like he has a ton of hype. Like you'd be that first guy to beat him, and just with his last name, like I imagine it does a lot for you in this division. If I beat Umar, I go Boomar. You know, I, I go to the I go to the stars. Uh, I think it's big, man. I think uh, an undefeated guy like that with that last name, like you know, the guy has a million followers. A lot of this game is about entertainment and, and eyes on you and stuff like that. And I think beating him brings a lot of eyes on me, a lot of attention. And really kind of tells people like, oh, like Keller is not just a walkover. Like he's not just like a guy where like, oh, he's a gatekeeper and they're just going to feed him these guys to to beat him. And he's a guy who is still here, who belongs, who is still ready to, to make a, a jump at that top 15. Uh, O'Malley going to be a call out or are you kind of done with that? Oh my god, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of exhausted by calling this guy out. Uh, but it is it is a fight that I think needs to happen eventually. And I think you know, if I keep winning and and he's where he is, and the UFC kind of sees something about it, I can keep promoting it and, and get at, get after it. Then I think you know it's a possibility. But I think that O'Malley's a guy that has a plan. You know, he he knows who he wants to fight and what kind of fights he wants. And I think the UFC is kind of behind him with that. So it's hard to to make something like that happen. I'd have to really uh, bring a lot of attention towards it and, and, and give a storyline on why we should make that fight. But I'm just here to keep winning, honestly, and stay active. And hopefully that's something that we see in the near future. Uh, just two more things. I've been seeing people that say Bryce Mitchell's the best rapper in MMA. Like, are you going to try to make it clear that you are? Let me tell you something, brother. You see these guns? <laughs> I don't know if you saw that interview yeah. with Ariel, but that interview had me cracking up, man. Like, you got to love Bryce. Like, he's a funny dude. But uh, with the music, I haven't listened to enough of them. I'll be honest. Like, I, I think I'm the best rapper in the UFC and MMA. I don't put enough time into it. I do it for fun, more of a hobby. Uh, I do like to write, and I'll just throw a beat on. I'll write something right there, and I'll spit it right there. You know, So I got to do a better job memorizing my lyrics and stuff and, and really get a good producer and make like a nice project. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, if Bryce wants to – if he wants to join up with me and make a little MMA album, that would be cool. Or if he wants to do a little challenge, that would be fun too. Uh, just last thing, like what is kind of the goal for you this year? I know it's always to be active, but – it would already be 2-0 this year by March. Like It sets you up for a pretty big year. Yeah, I love that I started strong in January, early in the year, you know, and we're already getting another fight against a really, you know, a really uh, a good opponent and, and big name uh, undefeated guy. So get this win, you know, 2-0, and start the year really strong, and then let's get two or three more in, you know, let's stay active. I'll, I'll, I'll even do five if I stay healthy. I mean, my goal this year, honestly, is – as long as I'm healthy to jump on all opportunities and to really 
put it out there and tell the UFC, like, hey, I'm the guy. Like, I'm willing to step up. Like, you know, someone like Bobby Green, who I respect, you know, steps up on short notice to get a, a big opportunity like Makachev. Like, that's the guy I want to be for the company. And as long as I'm good to go, healthy, like, right now, I have no time to waste. I'm 35. I want to keep fighting as long as I'm in my prime like this. Let, let's stay active and get these wins. Well, Brian, I appreciate the time as always. Thank you so much for doing this. Boom. Thanks. All right, we're joined by UFC light heavyweight Dustin Jacoby, who's got a very fun fight coming up. Dustin, how's it going, man? Good, man. Thanks for having me on your show. Like you said, I do have a fun fight coming up. I'm looking forward to it. Just a few more weeks, man. Yeah, uh, Michelle Olegzaychuk, we'll call him Michelle, make it a bit easier, or Michael, I don't really know. But um, when you heard that name, like he's always in all action fights, like was it basically just an immediate yes? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I didn't, uh, know who he was when I first heard the name, but that's no, nothing towards him. I just didn't know. I don't know a lot of the guys. There's so many fighters now these days, but, uh, once I looked him up, man, I certainly know who he is now. He's a great fighter and, and brings a lot of pressure. I think that I'm, I'm in that division. I'm one of the guys that brings the most pressure and I think he's right there with me. So it should be a fun fight for, for everyone. And then you probably look at the date after the opponent and it's a pay-per-view in Las Vegas in front of fans. Like what's that like for you being able to be back in front of fans? Yeah, it's, it's huge, man. We, we started out doing this for the fans. I'll never forget when I was an amateur, some of the biggest crowds, you know, and, and the fans going nuts and uh, just having a blast. And I was able to get back to fighting in front of fans at Madison square garden, uh, you know, just, uh, uh, back in November. So that was super cool. And uh, it reminded me what it felt like. I remember they had ceremonial weigh-ins. I got on the scale and the the crowd kind of erupted a little bit. Nothing like, uh, you know, when the main event gets up there, McGregor or something, but I felt the love. I felt like a lot of the fans had been watching me fight during the pandemic, even pulling up on the bus, getting off and hearing, hearing the fans yell Jacoby. And then when I got on the scale, they were yelling. It gave me all the energy in the world. I was so excited to compete for them in front of them. And uh, uh, March 5th will be the same way. I'm going to have a lot of family and friends in the building. And and hopefully we get a, a, a premier spot on the card. That'd be cool, too. Uh, just quickly, like, what was last year like for you? Like, being back in the UFC? Like, I know you got in at 2020, but to a lot of people, you went 4-0. Like, I think you beat Kudalaba. I think majority of people thought you won that fight. And, like, you really became, like, kind of a household name in this division. So, like, what was last year like for you? Uh, it was super cool, man. I, I loved it. It was just accumulation of the past 10 years of my life, just coming uh, together and, you know, the, the, the stars lining at the right time and just everything uh, matching up. It was really cool going out. Uh, I got noticed by so – I've always kind of had hit and miss – uh, people are like, oh, hey, you know, but it, it seems like a, a, everywhere I go now, somebody's pointing me out, which is kind of cool. But at the same time, that's not why I did it. it but it is fun to, in, um, you know, talk with the fan, interact with the fans and, and uh, to feel that love and feel that support is really cool. And with Michelle, like he's kind of a, he's a kickboxer as well. Like the way he loses is generally by submission. So do you kind of think – he's not going to shoot and you probably won't shoot either. So just going to be a kickboxing fight. Well, I can't, I can't guarantee that just because I really think he, he's a great MMA fighter. I think he's good at trying to sneak in some takedowns and he's always bringing the pressure. I can see him bringing the pressure, trying to take me down, which I think he will, um, you know, early, early on in the fight, the first couple minutes. And once I defend a, a takedown or two and let him know that, you know, that's not going to be easy and I'll be throwing strikes back and, uh, you know, doing whatever it takes to get him out of there. I think it'll become a kickboxing match. And I, I always say, man, like I'll never be the guy to shoot first. Um, but I do have more of a game than just just yeah. stand up. And, and especially in the gym, I mean, I'm taking guys down and controlling from the top and really winning uh, via ground and pound or, or you know, I've, I've got long limbs. So catching them in a, a some type of choke. But I'm more of a kickboxer. I think this will be a kickboxing fight. I, I – I don't know. I just need to pull the trigger and, and maybe wrestle a little bit more and, and expose, show some of that ground game and expose some of the guys that way, maybe gain a little more respect so people aren't trying to take me down. But then again, uh, the sprawl and brawl tactic has worked so far. Do you think, though, like anyone that comes from glory, like same thing with Adesanya and yourself, everyone just goes, oh, just take them down and that's how you win. Like you wouldn't get this far if you didn't know how to at least stuff a few takedowns and wrestle a little bit. Like everyone always just goes, Oh, they just got to take out on you down. That's how they win. But 
he's Good obviously luck. working on <laughs> it's same with you like you're obviously working on defending takedowns yeah that's a great point cole because uh, a lot of guys are like oh he's just a kickboxer just take him down like it like okay now he, he doesn't wrestle he doesn't do jujitsu he doesn't try to keep you from taking you down have good takedown defense it's it's uh, MMA. They call it mixed martial arts for a reason. Uh, but if you're really good at the stand up and, and really good at staying on your feet and not allowing somebody to come in and, and dictate where the fight goes. And, and, and in theory, we're dictating where the fight goes by being the better strikers, controlling the distance and not allowing them to get close enough to take us down. So, uh, but like you said, we train everything every day and um, fully equipped and ready for wherever the fight goes. How do you kind of see this fight playing out? Just because I know you're a guy that always searching for the finish, and this one just kind of seems like one of those fights that's not going to need the judges. I think yeah, I think it's going to be a high paced fight from the get go. I think him and I, he's going to get in my face, which is really going to up my tempo. And I really just I keep telling myself just go out there, have no fears, and just go balls to the wall, and just what wherever it goes, just go with it, man. I'm I'm capable. Um, I, I just really see this a high paced fight and a fight that, that really has fight of the night written all over it with two guys just going at it um, until one of us goes down. I, I really do see myself catching him either on the feet or in, in some type of submission. And, and uh, I, I don't see it being a clean fight. I see it being a dirty fight, though, him getting in my face and us getting after it. And what's it like being on this card? Because when this fight was announced, like I have a lot of friends that like will just watch the pay per views here. They only know like the big ones. And right when this was announced, like I had a lot of my friends texting like, "Oh, we ought to watch this." Like I'm really looking forward to this fight. And like they've they made this a good card too. Like there's a lot of names on this one as well. Yeah, it's a great card to be a part of. Anytime the UFC asks you to fight on a pay per view card with fans, it's awesome, you know. And uh, it, it's a big opportunity and another step forward in my career and another, um, you know. A, a, opportunity for me to just climb the ladder and, and continue the streak. I was thinking, is this your first time at the T-Mobile fighting? Because you first in the UFC would have been Mandalay Bay. They would have been normally fighting in. Yep. Yeah. I fought at Mandalay Bay, my first fight. And I fought at, uh, I fought at the hard rock, which is no longer the hard rock. Uh, I fought at, uh, Oh, uh, that. Anyway, yeah. I, anyway, this is my this is my first fight at T-Mobile, and and the arena is new as well. Yep. Planet Hollywood. I couldn't think of Planet Hollywood. I fought at Planet Hollywood, uh, the Hard Rock, Mandalay Bay, and T-Mobile now. So this would be pretty cool. Yeah, back to back fights, MSG and T-Mobile. That's not two bad arenas to go to in back to back fights. No, man. I'm I'm living my dream. I'm living my life, and and uh, like I said, everything's finally coming together like I always had envisioned it. I just took a little bit longer and, and my journey was a little different than a lot of guys. I got to experience and travel the world with glory kickboxing, which was really cool. A huge opportunity. I got to meet and see so many people and places that I never would have if it wasn't for that journey. And now here I am back in the UFC experienced and, uh, you know, ready to climb to the top and, and bring a lot, I just bring a lot more experience with me. And, and this go around has been a lot of fun. Are you putting like any pressure to go out and get the finish just because everyone kind of knows like you finish guys is kind of how you move up the ranks quicker. But then again, like you don't want to be reckless. It gets more about getting the win. Yeah, absolutely. Like even my last fight, I, I you know, I, I, I just didn't want to get too reckless. I wanted to make sure I ensured that I got the win. You know, I just wanted to positively secure the win. Um, this fight, I'm not really too nervous about that. I guess, the more this streak goes, you know, I haven't lost in a while. So I haven't yeah. lost since 2016 and I was in kickboxing. And uh, yeah, so so the longer this streak goes, I am starting to think about that a little bit more. Um, and I don't know why, but also we're getting to the point in camp where it's been kind of a long camp. And now I'm just right now really starting to flip that mindset um, over to where I got to be the Hanyak and the guy that goes in there and and uh, gets mean, gets dirty, and gets things done. So um, the the closer I get to the fight, all those doubts or any anything of worrying about the streak or worrying about wins and losses just goes out the window. I just got to trust my my training and uh, react and and use my instincts, man, and and uh, go out there and do my best. And that's all uh, my coach is going to ask for me, and that's all anybody that cares about me deeply is going to ask for me. As long as I go out there and do my best and. I feel like it's going to be pretty good, man. Everything's starting to click at the right time. Oh, where do you think a win puts you? Because, like, I think to a lot of people, that'd be six and a row or six and zero oh in this UFC spin. Like, 
Code of is ranked at 15. I think a lot of people, you beat him. So, like, I wouldn't be surprised if you have a number beside your name with a win here. I would hope so, man. I, I really think that I, I would be that top, like, 14, 15. And then after this win, I want to fight somewhere like 7 to 12, you know, like, like, because timing's everything, right? And and if you get your opportunity, I can go in there and call out the 8th, ninth, 10th guy and, and beat them, and now I take their spot. And then you're you're just a couple fights away from the top. I mean, timing is everything. I, and I, I really do believe that the winner of this fight, because he's right there too, uh, Michelle. So, I mean, the winner of this fight is going to climb their way into the top 15 and get the opportunity to, uh, to keep climbing. So I got to go out there and get the job done, man. It's me or him, and it's got to be me that night. Is that Kuda Lava fight one you want back, like down or not like back, but is that one you want to do again down the line, or is that like kind of one you think you want anyways? There's no real point. Well, you know, no, I mean, I, I don't think that. I, I think that uh, as long who knows, right? He keeps winning, I keep winning. I mean, we're both, you know, chasing towards the top. He's right there, I'm right there. Of course, I'd like to run it back. I'd like to have a little more time uh, to prepare and, and be in better in better shape. Excuse me. Um, and just be better overall. Uh, but of course, when he goes and fights, I'm I'm rooting for him. I want him to go out there like right after we fought. He went and smashed the guy in the first round, and then or no, I think it was a decision win, but it was pretty dominant. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't remember, but it was a dominant win. You know, I went out there and won dominantly against Darren Stewart, and then I got another win, so I picked up two since we fought. So um, I, I definitely am not. I haven't closed the door on that, but we'll see. You know, if our if our paths meet again, um, I'll be more than ready. And if you look at the light heavyweight division, like there are so many fun fights for you in that top 15. Like you can like name any of like Vulcan Uzi or Dominic Reyes, like Jamal Hill, Johnny Walker, like and uh, Tiago Santos. Like any of those fights are like fun fights just to watch as fans. Oh, I agree, man, because you have two guys that are going going in there to take each other's heads off and you're going to go toe to toe and it's not, there's nothing boring about it. Right. And, and I get it is mixed martial arts, but people want to see two people go at it. They don't want to see the the wrestler go in and, and just try to grind you out, right? I mean, that's, that's no fun. But, again, that's our job to make sure that doesn't happen. And, and kudos to the guy that does do that and can get it done. But, you know, the, like you said, there's a lot of exciting fights in that, in that top 15, top 10 of the UFC in, in the light heavyweight division of guys that are going in there to take each other's heads off. Uh, what's kind of the goal for you this year? Like, I imagine be active, like three fights probably minimum and probably – top 10 you could probably be by the end of the year yeah absolutely top 10 is definitely a goal of mine um like i said that's a fight or two away and then from there um i, I just want to get into the top 10 that that is a big goal of mine i have it written down and um if i can accomplish that, that that's huge man you just build off that but you take one fight at a time um and you know i, I do believe the best is ahead and I just got to continue getting better daily and putting in the work and, and showing up prepared and trusting my instincts. Oh, what do you make of the light heavyweight division? Because for quite a while when Jones was kind of just at the top, like it was kind of stale just because he was beating everyone. But now you look like with Glover and Yon's kind of improbable runs and there's a lot of like new blood coming in, like yourself, Jamal Hill, like Johnny Walker, uh, like there's, uh, Magman Ankh Live. Like there's so many new guys that it's like all you guys are going to be at the top pretty soon. Oh, absolutely. They're all right there. And like you said, it's wide open right now. When, when John Jones was the champ, it was like, you know, and I, and I never, he was already gone too. When I got back in, so it's felt refreshing. It's felt wide open. It, it feels like anything is possible. You know, there's no dominant champion. Right and when he, when he was the champ, it's like, Oh, good luck. You know, even when you get up to the top, even though, I mean, and every fighter, of course, we're, we're the alphas. We think that, you know, we're the biggest, strongest, fastest, most badass guys. But when you got the go and John Jones, like the guy that just doesn't lose and, and he's physically gifted and, and had the talent is there and just a lot of God given talent. I mean, that makes it a little bit steeper that hill, just a little bit steeper, but with him gone, it seems wide open. My buddy, Anthony Smith, I think he's going to yeah. come back. He, he, he wins a one. He's probably got a title shot, you know, so he could be the champion. I mean, it's crazy at the top, man. A lot of good fighters, a lot of guys that are going to mix it up, and I think that belt will be passed around a few times here in the near future. Is Anthony the only guy really in the division you probably wouldn't fight? Yeah, in, unless it was for the title. I think he would know that too. There's no way Anthony and I would ever fight unless it was for a UFC title. You know, we'd shake hands and go out there and, and, and bang it out. But if I, I would not fight him in the top ten. We've, we, we came up together. 
Um, we, we've, we, we, we are obviously training partners now. Um, and that's my boy, man, that there's too many other guys out there to be at this point in my career to be going and ruining a friendship and finding somebody that I know. And for the title, I think we both would just grant hell. We'd probably train together. I don't know. We just train together and then go fight. I don't think that's ever been done. Two guys fighting for a title, let's train together. That would be pretty wild. But uh, I've never even thought about that. Honestly, usually you split up camps or whatnot. But um, no, man. I, and I think Anthony could go in there and went and get that title. I, you know, there was a lot of things going on when he fought Glover, um, and he won. He about had him that first round, stuck him with that jab over and over and over in that cross, and just got tired. You know, and I think that's a fight Anthony can win. And I think, you know, he, he, he's going to be right up there competing for that title. So it's going to be interesting, man. It's going to be, it's going to be fun, but I still have, you know, I've got fights ahead of me. I got to prove myself long before that. So um, I'm not even looking at that. I'm just focusing on uh, Michelle and, and uh, March 5th. Uh, just last thing we have to talk a bit of golf. Any golf trips lately you've been on or when's the last time you got man. out there? So we have a golf simulator here at our complex and I, so I, I play, you know, weekly. I'm, you know, probably go down there here this afternoon with the buddy and swing a little bit, but the weather we got dumped on, we've had a lot of snow. So I haven't been out. In fact, I have memories on my phone from this day, uh, three years in a row playing golf. Uh, but this year it's not happening. We have too much snow on the ground. Um, and I'm going to miss my guys golf trip, a, a bunch of my good buddies that I grew up with. Uh, they're going to be in Vegas on the golf trip two weeks prior to my fight. And while I, I definitely wanted to be there, um, there's just no way I could have pulled that off and, and expected to do big things on March 5th. So I'm going to miss that trip, but I am looking forward to the golf season, man. I'm getting that itch. I've been swinging, and uh, it's one of my favorite hobbies. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I've talked to a couple guys at Factory X that you've been uh, getting them into golf, and they all rave about how good you are. And even when we talk, like – I know how good you are. Like, uh, how many guys at the gym now do you actually go out and play with? Yeah, so when, when the weather gets better, I mean, Coach and I and, and Caruso, we play every – I forget what day. We, we play once a week, and then uh, there's a couple other guys. You know, Colin, Colin's a pretty good swinger. He, he doesn't talk like he's that good, and he does have his bad moments. But the thing with golf, it's, it's consistency, and, and you got to be playing. You know, it's so hard for guys to go out there – and and you got to really be into it too. Uh, but Colin hit some great shots, and uh, I know Gino's picking up the sticks now. I got Coach addicted again. He bought a new set of clubs. He hadn't played in like five, six, seven years. But I remember when I first moved here six, seven years ago, uh, going out and playing with Coach, and he wasn't too bad. And then he didn't play forever. And this past year, he actually the last time we played, he beat me, and he he was shooting really bad. Uh, starting off and then he beat me the last time we played so I owe him a, a little payback next time we get on the course and I saw where DC had tweeted is there anybody in MMA that plays golf I'm gonna fly you down to Houston and take your money like I did Gaethje man I tried getting hitting him up I sent him an IG message I hit him up on Twitter I was like dude fly me in we'll pay 100 bucks on the front nine 100 bucks on the back nine 100 bucks overall I'll buy you lunch with my wings you just got to tell him at the fighter meetings when you face to face, just tell him you beat 100%. him. Anyway. Come March. I'm bringing that up 100%. Because what's cool with DC is I was, uh, uh, I helped uh, Stipe and, and Mark and, and our guys coach the ultimate fighter. I think it was season 27 and it was Stipe and DC. So I, you know, I know DC, he took us out a couple nights. DC was awesome, man. We, we had some fun. So um, like I said, I'm definitely going to bring that up. I'm going to find him on a course. Well, what is your handicap? Like, what do you normally shoot? I, I'm a, a seven handicap right now. So um, 2020 was actually my best year of golf. I had, I don't know how, I mean, over 10 rounds in the seventies. And I usually play 40 to 50 rounds a year. Last year I struggled a little bit, uh, shot mid, mid to upper eighties. Um, had my guys golf trip that I almost, I, I ended up finished second, but you know, I, the guy that won it, he's a phenomenal golfer. Um, yeah, man. And it's just fun. I have my struggles out there, but um, it's something that I just enjoyed so much. And, and uh, I'll always play, man. Yeah, that's what I'm around. I'm, you, I'm normally like anywhere from like 84 to 88 when I go out. So if I ever get out to Denver, I'll have to go out for a round. My, my best score ever is an even par 72. And what I'll take away from that day, it was like a beautiful Saturday morning. 
2020. I thought 2020 was the year I was going to hit a hole in one too. I've still never hit a hole in one. Uh, but it, and I missed two uh, birdie putts like inside, just outside the gimme range. So I could have, I could have shot under par, man. I, I didn't even know it until after I knew I was playing well, but I didn't know the score until we ended up at the end. I actually thought I shot like a 73, 74. I ended up shooting a 72, which was, uh, that, that's pretty cool to say, man. That, that's awesome. Yeah, I hit 79 once this year. It's the only time I've broken 80, but that okay, was my well, so, so you play. I mean, you, you can play. Yeah, I play quite often in the summer. Nice, but, man. Yeah, but I appreciate you doing this, Dustin. Uh, thank you again. For sure, buddy. We'll, uh, we'll have to get out on the course one of these days. Yeah, you'll have to give me a couple strokes, though. <laughs> yeah, that's fine with that. <laughs> All right, we're joined by UFC lightweight Jalen Turner, who's back and acting at UFC 272. Jalen, how's it going, man? It's going pretty good, you know, just heading home. <laughs> um, back on another pay-per-view in front of fans. Like, how excited was that for you? Like, you experienced it last time, and they're keeping you on the pay-per-view. Um, you know, it's, it's super exciting. I love fighting in front of the crowds. Like, it's, it, it always motivates me. Um. Another big card, you know, you can't beat that. I like fighting on the big cards, you know. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, you know, some people like fighting on the smaller cards. The only, the only reason why I don't like fighting on bigger cards is because I don't get my bonuses. And that's yeah. it. Like, you know, that's the only reason why. <laughs> uh, your opponent, Jamie Malarkey, like, how much do you know about him? He has looked pretty impressive as of late. Um, I was supposed to fight him, like, two years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, two years ago, so... I know a lot about him. I followed his career. I've been studying him a while, you know. I already had game plans set when I was supposed to fight him originally. So um, I, I know a fair amount. So um, I feel really confident going into this fight. Do you think the stakes of this fight are a lot different than what they were back in 2020? Because like you guys are both on a roll, and I think the winner of this could be getting that top 15 guy. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt, it's definitely um, – it's higher stakes at this point. Um, yes, um, I do feel like after this fight, there should be, you know, somebody uh, thrown from the rankings, top 15, of course. Yeah, um, this, this is pretty much like uh, who wants to go uh, to the top, you know? You're a big lightweight, but he kind of matches you in size and reach. Like You only have like a inch and a half inch reach. Like, is it going to be weird? Because normally you are a lot bigger and uh, taller than a lot of these guys. No, not at all. I actually train with a lot of bigger guys anyway and longer guys. Um, I like I like finding the taller guys. Actually, it's better for me. Um, you know, shorter guys kind of, you know, it kind of like the timing gets different there. In and out movements a little bit better. So taller guys usually don't fight as long as they need to. And like I'm like pretty versed at managing my distance and uh, my range. So yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. How do you think you match up against him? Because on I think on paper a lot of people view this as just a, kind of going to be a kickboxing fight. Um, you know it, it, it sh for the most part it should be. Um, I, I feel like I defended. I feel like I match the ground game or I surpass the ground game if anything. Um, uh, my takedown defense will be there. I know he's going to shoot a takedown or two here and there. You know, um, he's been confident in the stand up, so I hope he brings that to this fight. So <laughs> that'll be it'll be a fun stand up battle. For and he is super durable. So, like, are you kind of expecting this to go the distance? But on this other end, like, you finished a lot of guys that are durable, like, especially like your last fight. Like, Medish was a guy that could take some shots. I do not expect this fight to go the distance. Um, he is very durable. I feel like that's his biggest asset to win this fight this fight um i feel like technically everywhere else I, I i pick him apart you know um so i i'm not i'm not, like his dirt I, I love fighting the tough guys i love fighting the durable guys like i love that because i know exactly what they're gonna do i know exactly how they like their ways to win and it, it just it it gives me a, a chance to showcase a little bit more you know so i've been growing so much as a fighter over these last couple of years and, you know, he has to, obviously, but he still relied so much on his durability. Like, it's, it's, that's not good with me, you know? <laughs> uh, heading into the UFC, you were known as a striker and, like, a long rangey striker with knockout power. Past two fights, though, submissions that you fight, like, do you think people are finally stopping sleeping on your ground game? 
No, nah, people still sleeping on it. You know, I want everybody to sleep. Just keep sleeping on me. I'm keep. I'm just gonna keep developing and growing. You know, I'm not. I'm leaving no stone unturned. I've been executing a lot more jujitsu, a lot more uh, wrestling into my camps, into my game. Uh, I brought my coach uh, Ozzy into the camp, so you know that's why my my ground game looks so much better because I'm not I'm not worried about where the fight goes anymore at all. And the the more my ground game develops, the better my striking will be because I'm not worried about getting taken to the ground. Yeah, that's something I wanted to build on. Like, how much better is it now where you can you can choose to take a fight down to the ground if you want, and then that obviously helps your hands because then they don't know if you're going down for a shot, or then you can go with like an overhand right and catch them. Yeah, it helps a lot. Like even like in sparring lately, um, I've been able to execute um, a lot of offensive takedowns. And I normally do, but I just I just really don't use them in fights much. Like when I fought Medic, like I knew I was going to be able to utilize it, and so I did. Um, but yeah, like I'm just, I'm just becoming more well-rounded of a fighter. And that's even more dangerous because my striking is always going to be far superior than others. Uh, submission though, or are you thinking you can knock him out? Um, honestly, I, just, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, like, like you said, he is durable. Uh, I do take that in. I take that into, into consideration. I'm not going to go out there and try to just knock his head off every strike. Um, shoot. He might, he might shoot for a bad take, then I'll take his throw. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how the fight goes. You know, you can't predict these things. You just can prepare for them. So I'm just prepared for whatever. Uh, being on this card, though, with, like, Mazdal Covington at the top, there's, like, Barboza, there's, like, a Kevin Holland, like, there's a lot of big names, big fights. Like, do you think you kind of have to get at statement finish to even have any shot at the bonus with all these names on the card? Man, look, I've, how many, how many fights? Four, I've had four finishes in the UFC, and I haven't got a bonus yet. I'm not worried about it. I'm, like, you know, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. <laughs> Well, what will it be like being on this card? Because there is, like, even my friends that don't really follow UFC that much, they're already, like, texting me excited about this card just because Covington Mazdal is at the top. You know, um, the last card I was a part of was uh, pretty big and historic. Yep. So, um, you know, it's just another one. It's another one to add to the, to the legacy. Even today, um, the UFC just posted that Israel Adesanya versus uh, Anderson Silva was three years ago. I fought on that card, you know, I was like, damn, like, that's crazy. I got beat Colin Potter that day. So, you know, it's, it's a part of my legacy. I'm just building my way up until I'm the main, I'm the one on the main card in the main event. Being back in Vegas. Do you like that, that it's in Vegas or do you wish it was kind of in one of these other spots you haven't been to? I don't mind staying close to home, man. We go fight, fight in Vegas every weekend. <laughs> Are you liking though? Like obviously, bad side of pay per view is bigger names, less chance of bonus. But the better side is fans. Like how much better is that for you fighting when you can experience all that fans and just not at the apex? Yeah, you know, like I don't mind fighting at the apex either. Like it, it literally like it was not much of a difference besides obviously like the energy from the crowd and like the experience after the fight and before the fight, the walkout. But um, you know, um being on another pay-per-view car with the fans, it's like, it's, it's definitely going to, I think it's going to play in my favor. I'm going to be like really hyped. I'm going to just enjoy the energy, soak up the energy. Um, I don't remember the last time he's fought in front of a crowd. So that might play a factor too. So we'll see. How close do you think you are for being on these like main cards and like high up on there as well? Cause like you're an exciting guy that like, I think they would want to put you on pay-per-view for your fights. Um, I think after this one, we should, we should be on that on that main card slot somewhere getting there, you know, uh, where do you think a win puts you? Cause obviously that would be what four in a row. And like, especially if you can finish it, it would be three finishes in a row would be like, you'd be or four finishes in a row. You'd be on a good streak. Um, you know, it, I think it should put me somewhere I need to be. Obviously it's all in the UFC's hands. Like I'm not really stressing it. I'm not trying to jump the gun keep giving me fighters keep feeding me whoever and then i'm gonna just keep eating keep eating because i'm gonna get paid the same whether it's a top 15 guy top 20 guy you know so until i start making you know making the progressions and the leaps back or leaps forward you know because it's also a business you know you gotta look at the business aspect too so um that being said you know it's whatever they want to do with me like i'm 
I'm just slowly preparing for my ascent. I'm just climbing the top. The tarantula's climbing the ladder. <laughs> I know Iridium takes care of fighters pretty well, but like, have you talked to the UFC or them about maybe re-upping before this fight or after, especially if you get a win, because then more money would be right near that top 15? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, we talked about it, you know. That's all. That's, that's I'm always talking about money, you know. I'm always yeah. trying to get, get as much as I can out of it. So, um, yeah, uh, we'll see. It should be some good things after this one. As long as I get a good win, you know. Um, fingers crossed, you know, putting the work in for it. You know, I get a good win, and then we just, we start talking some good numbers. Do you really plan to call anyone out, or is it just right now, just whoever the UFC gives you until you start getting that bigger name? <laughs> oh man it's funny because i was setting up a call out after this one but i i don't know bro that's not my style so we'll see we'll see if it if it comes out after the fucking post fight hype i might i might shout it out but if not then i'm gonna just chill so let's the see. adrenaline might just get to you and it might just come out yeah it might it just might so we'll see we'll see uh, just a few more things. Like, what is kind of the goal for you this year? I know you like being pretty active, and like you could string together probably one, two more wins. Like, you'd be right there by the ranking, by the rankings. Um, honestly, yeah, just maybe get this one in. Maybe fight like uh, in the fall. Maybe get another one in summer, and another one in the winter. I, I want like maybe like two or three, just two or three, and I'll be I'll be set. You know, I'll be cruising for the rest of the year. Like, coaches be happy. I'll be happy to get three more wins. And, you know, i got to be knocking on doors at that point, you know. So, we'll see, you know. I'm just taking it day by day, like, piece by piece. I'm not in any rush, like I said. Like, I took a year off unwillingly, like, a year, like, the year before. So, you know, like, whatever happens, happens. Like, I don't know how this is going to go. It's a fight game. So, as long as I'm just preparing and getting better, like, that's all. that's all that matters to me. A uh, bigger octagon at the T-Mobile compared to the Apex. Do you think that really plays a factor in this fight? Um, honestly, Oct- octagon size never really uh, and it does, but it really doesn't. You know, it never really made too much of a difference for me. Um, I'm gonna just be able to dance around and have more fun. Like, especially if it's if you're gonna try to shoot on me, like it's not gonna be. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Like, it really doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I. A tarantula update. How many do you got right now? Um, I think I got like twenty-three. I, is that not less than what you used to have? Didn't you used to have like a lot more? Um, the most I ever had was like a couple hundred <laughs> at one point. That was like the most, but that was like, man, that was like years ago. That was like like seven, seven, eight years ago. How would you even like get into like? wanting tarantulas as a pet um i got like i started hanging out with friends that hated tarantulas and then like they made me not like them and then like i was like like they just started like creeping me out and like stopped liking spiders and shit and i was like i've never was like that you know so i was like damn it's kind of weird like how like you know like like being around certain uh like mindsets can change your mindset so i was like damn and then like i was like you know what like let me get over this fear I'm gonna get a tarantula as a pet. Got one as a pet. Like, like kind of creeped me out. I watched it drink water. I was like, oh shit! And then like it let me hold it, and I was like, damn, that was dope. And it just became like my favorite pet ever since. The funniest thing is the UFC created that like rule because of you. Is there no one's allowed to bring any stuff to the weigh-ins? Yeah, yeah. I know they need to. They need to put a little a little tarantula name after me for that. But in a good way, not in a bad way, though. <laughs> yeah. At least you got to do it once. Like, it won't happen again, but at least you got to do it once. You know, and that was, like, the whole point of it. Like, no fighter's ever done anything like that. So, you know, it's kind of historic in a way. Uh, well, Jalen, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much for doing this. Hell yeah, of course. Anytime. Yeah.